Jill, Doug, uh, I, like anyone else, am fascinated about the prospect of extraterrestrial intelligence. I think we all are. But my current interests are really to look at deep questions, uh, questions of cosmology, questions of the nature of human consciousness, philosophy and theology, and all, all the deep questions of humanity. And I have a feeling that this question of extraterrestrial intelligence somehow can relate to these bigger questions. Uh, I know you guys are very much involved in the details, but do you ever sit back at night and think about those things? Well, absolutely. Um, the, the question of are there other intelligent creatures in the universe is a perfectly legitimate question to ask of the universe. And there is an answer. It's yes or no. Whether or not we can find them, there, there is an answer. And so I think that we searched for extraterrestrial intelligence because now we can. Uh, the 20th century gave us some scientific tools with which to attempt to try and find evidence of someone else's technology out there. And for the first time, this question becomes one that we can try and answer in a scientific framework rather than on the basis of somebody's belief system. So right now, we're searching with the tools that we have because we can. Yeah, and because we have to as a species. Well, because we can. Um, so, Jill, you're an astronomer. You're very much interested in the question, is anyone else out there? But I, as a psychologist, am also interested in what we learn about ourselves in the process. You know, um, we have suppositions about what life is necessarily like, what intelligence is necessarily like, and that drives the search. But ultimately, I think we're searching for life out there for the same reason that we try to make contact with other cultures here on Earth, to examine our own presuppositions and to see if the things that we think are universal are necessarily universal. You know, we, we have to start with the presupposition that there's something that's held in common with another civilization. So we look for the kinds of technology that we can imagine, technology that is founded on basic scientific principles that we're familiar with, but um, the question remains whether, in fact, other intelligent beings will even have a science comparable to ours. And so I think these are some of the questions. Yes, we can learn something about our culture, our way of understanding the universe. But we can also ask whether our um, models of scientific reality um, are the same as those of beings on other worlds. So it's worlds. both the technology and the message, and the message being perhaps even more interesting about how we communicate and how we can apprehend other civilizations. The message, uh, and of course, if we get a message from another civilization, um, we may not be able to decode it. Uh, we may not even be able to detect it. You know, We may get a strong signal that indicates that, yes, there's intelligent life out there, but if there's a message, it may be intricately encoded. We may need a bigger telescope. It may take a tremendous amount of time in order to um, uh, unravel the mysteries of what that message contains. Hey, Doug, I'll be willing to build that bigger telescope. I know, I know, and the funding um, will be there too. The, um, you know, the, the cosmic dial tone, the existence proof is fundamentally incredibly valuable, whether or not there's any information encoded. We learn an enormous amount from that proof of existence of another intelligent technological species. I, I, I think it's just endemic to our species to want to know. I mean, people have wanted to climb mountains or to travel to continents. How much more significant in terms of ultimate reality is, is what you're doing? Well, throughout recorded history at any rate, we've always built cosmologies and tried to figure right. out where we fit into them. And this is, in fact, where do we fit into the universe or the multiverses or whatever the appropriate model is for the cosmos, how do we fit in? And are we unique right. or are we an inevitable uh, outcome of the laws of physics and chemistry as we're beginning to understand them? And, are, and, and if it's an inevitable one, is it a, an extremely rare one or a relatively common one? I mean, there are very strong, even heated arguments that support all different views. I mean, you can take any philosophical view in this area and we can find people who are heatedly defending them. Well, I can certainly <laughs> I say to like you, that. right now, the data support any position you want to take uh -huh. because there really are no data. Well, I mean, that's just a, a, an opportunity for the future. You are in the odd position of if you have a positive proof, it's positive proof. But if you have an unending series of negative uh, results, that is not a negative proof. 
because the absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence, as a lot of people often well, say. That's right, but that doesn't stop us in other fields of scientific exploration, such as searching for magnetic monopoles or gravity waves. We need to build sure. bigger instruments sure. on the basis of past failure, to say that and we do it. To say that doesn't make this a science is not correct. It's because we're dealing in, 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 with a different kind of, of uh, it, it's exploration That's as right. well as science. It's a different methodology of the human species, and we, and we have to appreciate that. Particularly when you look at uh, the nature of the search. I mean, some people would say, look, you've been looking for over 40 years. You haven't found anything. There must not be anything out there. But given the sort of search that we do at the SETI Institute, um, where we look at uh, individually star by star and alternative strategies in the future, but looking over millions of individual frequencies, it's a very intensive search. And so far, we've looked at fewer than 1,000 stars. Now, over the course of the next 20 years, that number is going to leap to somewhere around a million stars. And when we get to those numbers, now we're getting at a reasonable number to find something out there. But if we would have found something so far, I would have been flabbergasted. <laughs> yeah. So it would be incredible to find yeah. something. We're really, even a million so stars, and we have uh, anywhere from 100 billion to 400 billion stars in our own galaxy. The number keeps fluctuating. But even that's a, a very small percentage of, of stars within our own galaxy. So, you know, it, technologies will advance, and I think we have an obligation to push it as fast and as far as we can. But recognize, even if you're at a million stars with nothing, that, that that's Absolutely. just beginning. Absolutely. That's right.